Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back on Assetto Corsa Competizione, back finally for our second of the GT3 car reviews. Yes, I know I said a couple of days ago that I've been making these daily and I might have missed a couple of days, unfortunately, but we're finally back today and again, I know I said in the last one it was the Audi, I forgot Aston Martin exists, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, ha show some mercy please, I beg, but yeah, today though we're back with the new Aston Martin GT4 car. We've taken this one to Brands Hatch, you know, British car, British track, it worked well with the Alpine, so hopefully we can have the same sort of luck here today. But obviously if you want to enjoy, make sure you get yourself subscribed for more ACC content coming to the channel. I desperately, desperately want to get into some league racing when I find a bit more time outside of the F1 recordings, but yeah, hopefully we can just continue on with these car reviews for now. You know, they'll have to do until I can properly get into more ACC. But yeah, obviously, the Alpine was a very, very weird and wonderful little GT4 car. Hasn't really ever seen much exposure outside of the new ACC game. To be honest, I didn't really know it was actually a GT4 car until that. Let's make a bit of a mistake in the Aston. Obviously, if you missed out that video, I would definitely, definitely recommend going back and checking it out. But the Aston Martin GT4, much, much more well-known. It's safe to say a much, much more common car, a much, much more popular car in the racing world. Now, obviously, this one is based off the V8 Vantage, uh, as you probably, obviously, therefore, instantly guess by the name. It's, it's got a V8 motor in it, and it sounds dirty as hell, and I love that. It's probably, yeah, Aston, I'd argue, one of the only companies that can make V8 that sound nearly as dirty as either Mercs or American cars. Obviously, we'll have the Camaro soon as well to give that a bit of a go down the line. But yeah, I am a big, big fan of the Aston Vantage anyway. Ooh, as we get a little bit loose and wild there. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's see if we can try and get it up to some pace, take it for a few laps here, obviously around the Brands Hatch circuit. Like I said, I'm still loving the new ACC GT4 DLC. I will hopefully try and make more content. I can't promise that it'll be daily, but I do definitely want to give ooh, all of the cars a bit of a go as we make a hash of the final corner here. So tyres are almost up to temperature then. We'll give it one more sort of run in lap, make sure everything is working as it should be. And yeah, like I sort of mentioned with the Alpine, haven't really had much experience with GT4 cars outside of, you know, just the new iRacing Porsche and BMWs. So... Yeah, we've sort of got to base most of our experience off that as we get a little bit loose through turn two. Just trying to push the limits just a little bit there. But I must admit, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. That is a lot in part down to just how good ACC's handling model is. They are really, really just... It was the little tweaks they made. I remember making a video about this a few months back. Obviously, I managed to get access to this game before it came out. I was very, very lucky to get sent an early copy. And back then, I'll be honest, I was a, wasn't particularly optimistic for a set of course competition. After it sort of released, it was a little bit buggy. It was a little bit rough around the edges, but unlike a lot of game developers that then rushed to get their next one on the cycle, obviously yearly sort of releases and everything like that, ACC, they took a step back and they looked at what needed to be fixed. And boy, have they fixed it at the end of the day. And it's now, I mean, more popular than when it debuted. I remember numbers very, very quickly when this game originally came out were dwindling pretty early on, but they really, really have brought it back, and in what style, I must admit as well. Let's therefore give you guys a little bit of an audio track as we try and go for a bit of a pushing lap around at this circuit. I know I'm still an ACC noob, but let's give it a go nonetheless. Look at that. Listen to that. Beautiful. Thank you. 
down in towards the final corner then. We're going to find about eight tenths over the previous lap we did. Obviously, as everything slowly gets up to temperature, it does obviously make finding time a little bit easier as we head through the final corner. Ooh, that was close. Almost stacked it, heading out of the final turn. But yeah, this thing, it sounds dirty, and I love it. It does sound brilliant at the moment. But I think, like with the Alpine, it's all the finer details that you notice on these cars. You know, they just... Everything handles as you'd expect it to. You know, I'm certainly no GT3 or GT4 driver. I've never driven one of these cars. But everything just handles as you would expect it to. You know, you can lean on the traction control. You can lean on the ABS, which is sort of what iRacing's always struggled with a whole lot more at the end of the day. And, you know, having all these cars, again, I'm, I can't stress this enough. People moan about the price of the DLC, but it's so worth it. You basically get another, what, 40% of the game. You know, on top of what is already a brilliant, brilliant game. I put, I should probably go back to the campaign at some point on ACC if I want to get into it a bit more. Just learn the ropes once again. But, yeah, anyway, coming down in towards the end of our next lap. I must admit, it does feel really, really satisfying when you get this thing hooked up around here. I might have to go for another attacking lap in just a moment here as we head down through the old... Well, I say the old part of the track. Obviously, it's not really old. It's... More just the Grand Prix layout, as that's a bit wide. That's not where we want it to be. Getting a little bit exploring the gravel traps there. Not ideal, but come on. Get the power down. Out in towards the final quarter. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for one more attacking lap, I feel, around this track. Let's ride on board then. Well, we're constantly riding on board. Let's go for a, a proper lap then around Brands Hatch in the new Aston Martin. Coming out of the final corner, over 200 kph as you head down in towards turn one. Just about time to get the car into sixth gear before you back down into fourth, aiming for that hole on the inside, using up all of the exit of the track there, even just dipping a wheel close to the gravel. Want to break just before the gantry for the hairpin if you want to try and keep it nice and tidy. I've accidentally used third gear on the exit there, but we're able to get the power down and use a little bit less of the traction control through turn four. Just trying to keep it nice and tidy. You've got a little bit of a straightaway now. And you want to stay on the right-hand side for turn five. Almost a hairpin. You've got to try and take such a late apex through there. Strong in the bit with the front end washing out this time round. But we've held on to it as we head now down the back straight. It's probably the longest straight. Well, by far and away the longest straight on this track break. Just at the two-cone marker on the outside. Fourth gear through there. Just try and use up all that exit curb to open up the run. And then back down into third gear for the next couple of corners. You have got a little bit of extra grip on the outside there. It looks like it's all grass, but there is a little bit of... I think it's AstroTurf or something like that through there. Try and get as close to the grass as you dare. Running a little bit wide, a little bit ragged that time round. So we head through the final couple of corners. Hopefully we can try and get a sub-135 here. That would be nice. Try and absolutely nail the final turn. I think we dropped a couple of tenths on our previous fast lap. Third gear. Back a bit of fourth. Use up all of the exit. And yeah, we should be able to get nicely under. That's going to be a 134.7 when all is sent. No, no, 134.6. So rather happy with that one at the end of the day. But yeah, the new Aston Martin GT4 car then. I personally don't quite like it as much as the Alpine, just because, sadly, I'm just not the biggest Aston Martin fan in the world. I certainly wouldn't mind if someone gave me one for Christmas, that being said, but I just love the history of the Alpine at the end of the day, and I'm not denying that Aston Martin has got a lot of endurance racing history. It just isn't quite the same for me, I'm afraid, at the end of the day. But once again, though, the Aston Martin Vantage GT4, a brilliant, brilliant handling little car. It feels... Fairly similar to the Alpine, I guess, where they're both sort of mid to rear engined and everything like that. You know, they just handle quite similarly. Hopefully, we'll start to see different characteristics from different cars sort of poking through as well. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do make sure you get yourself subscribed for more ACC content. And I think we will be back next time out, actually this time round, in the Audi GT4 car. I am very, very much looking forward to that. I'll see you guys in the next one.